And uh, when they made it to, to the North American continent, and they came up the Colorado River and out of the Grand Canyon, this is the first creature that, uh, entity I should say, that they uh, encountered, Massau, uh, greeted both the Hopi and the Zuni, emerging, uh, who were emerging from the giant reed, the Sipapuni at the bottom of Grand Canyon. And Massau taught, taught the Hopi how to survive, taught him how to uh, raise, uh, raise crops. Uh, Sangwuka is the, literally means big reed, and it's the, the word for, for Milky Way. So the, Massau is the god of this earth plane, it's also the god of the underworld, and, and a fire god, and death. And a lot of Hopis don't like you talk, talking about Massau. I've had people just kind of clam up, Hopi, Hopi people just cl clam up when you mention Massau, because he, he's a, as you can see, he's kind of a, a spooky looking uh, creature, and the word mass, M-A-S, means gray, actually means gray. So it looks very much like an extraterrestrial gray, one of the tall grays. Here's a, um, a nice um, Kachina doll. But, um, Massau said that the Hopi, after they came out of the Grand Canyon, couldn't just settle down and be, you know, be peaceful. They had to go on a migration, a series of migrations to mark out their territory. So they could uh, take a deed, uh, get a deed to, to their land in life. So they had to go on these journeys. After they, they came up here, they had to go to the four different directions and it's symbolized by the dance rattle with the swastika on it, the four directions. And of course, um, a lot of clans went to each of the four directions. Um, they went up into Canada. They went to what is called the back door, and this, this, uh, petro, uh, this pictograph, the rock painting, was found in Alberta, Canada. It's a flute player. It's a, it's a Hopi flute player in Canada. So the, the Hopi went up, up, far up, and they also went to, to the east, to the Ohio Valley, and um, according to Frank Waters and White Bear Fredericks, they, um, they left their signature in the shape of a great mound, the Serpent Mound in Ohio, southern Ohio. And at Serpent Mount, I was there in 2014 and gave a talk there about the Hopi and their relation to, to Serpent Mound. And this third Bear Clan tablet sort of resembles the, the serpent right here and perhaps the water of the Atlantic Ocean. And here's the sun, sunrise and sunset and the three mesas here. And maybe the second mesa, Shangopovi, the village, the major village there. So this is kind of a map of Hopi territory that resembles um, this very complex um, aligned with a different phases of the moon and the summer solstice sunset kind of goes that way. And if you go below the, the Serpent Mound, the, the head, of the serpent is right here. You can see the head of the serpent. And you know, the serpent mound is up here and it's a kind of a plateau, an uplift. And there's some similarities between the, the um, snake, a snake dancer, a uh, snake priest, and a, um, a sculpture found, a Hopewell sculpture found in southern Ohio. You see this in the, the pineal uh, gland area. This inverted triangle is it's exactly the same. You know, how, how is that possible? And you, you see these stripes similar. So you, you, and this horizontal thing here and this here. So, you know, the Hopi perhaps uh, the snake clan moved into southern Ohio and at least assisted with the construction of Serpent Mound. Another, um, another similarity, here's a, a pipe, 
about eight inches tall, and you see this arrow here. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's like um, two parallel lines right here. This is a snake dance kilt that the Hopi wear, and um, it's very, very similar. These two, these two symbols together. One in, from Ohio, and here's, this, here's a serpent belt right here. And it, it might be a feathered serpent, because there, in the back there's a bustle, a kind of feathers, but the serpent in the front. But, and it, um, the epigrapher Barry Fell thought that this, these two symbols um, represented the Egyptian Libyan uh, word um, WT, Wajit, you might um, pronounce it. It's the same as the Uraeus that found on Tutankhamun's headdress here. Okay, here's a, a LIDAR image of Serpent Mound. And um, Ross Hamilton believes that, um, that Serpent Mound is a Draco co uh, correlation, corresponds to the constellation Draco. And Thuban was the pole star back in 2830 BC. Now Polaris, of course, is the pole star. But back then, it was Thuban. And, um, you know, the, Draco kind of revolves this way around this, the, the pole star, okay? The constellation revolves. So, um, Ross Hamilton, who wrote the um, book Mystery of the Serpent Mound, I, I recommend that book to anyone interested in Serpent Mound, for, for sure, because he's a, a great writer. Okay. Um, Back to, to Hopi land, these are three mesas, first, second, and third mesa. Um, this is the center of the world, or the, or the kind of an axis mundi, or a tuanasabi, the Hopi call it. Um, they started building these, uh, they were uh, radiocarbon, or dendrochronology. Um, um, they started about 1100 AD, or maybe a little after because the tree ring dating on uh, some of the beams in the, in the Pueblos have been uh, uh, f from about this period. But of course the Hopi were in this area for thousands of years. They migrated around and they were living in um, pit houses, which are semi-subterranean structures that are more isolated before they moved into these Pueblos, these kind of stone apartment buildings. And I was driving up to, from Winslow, which is a place I spent a lot of time at. There are a lot of, ro a lot of rock art at Winslow. But um, going up to the Hopi Mesas, and I was kind of gazing off into the distance, driving, you know, that long straight road, like an arrow due north. And um, I thought, you know, I just read Robert Bouval's book, The Orion Mystery. And I thought, well, maybe there's an Orion correlation here in Arizona. Wouldn't that be something? So I put that in the back of my mind, and then uh, I got home. I went to the Kachina dances up there, and I got home and um, got out of the sky chart and got out a map and com compared the two. And you know, what I found was amazing. Oh, okay. That's what I found. Okay. The, there was a star relating to each village or ruin site in Arizona, okay? And they're all here. Here's the mesas, the three mesas, and uh, Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. Homolavi represents beetle juice. Wupatki represents Bellatrix. Walnut Canyon represents Misa, the head of Orion. And of course, Orion is 100 degrees reverse, just like at Giza. At Giza, the, the template is uh, points to the south, just like this does. Um, this is Canyon de Chez, okay? And Rigel is Batatican and, and Keats Hill. Rigel's a double star, by the way. And um, Orion reaches over to the Grand Canyon. So, you know, they were all there. Every, every star, I could find a, a, a village or a ruin site.
So I said, well, wow, I've got I've to look at this. Even uh, the village of Pinon, there's a, uh, it's a Navajo village, but um, there's a ruin site there too. Corresponds to uh, the, the Orion Nebula right there. Oh, well, I was going to show you this. You know, why is Orion important? You know, Orion is the beginning of the, the winter solstice ceremony because they're, they're in their kiva, they're in their underground prayer chamber. And they look up the overhead hatchway and they see Orion in the hatchway. And that's the start of the winter solstice ceremony which concludes at sunrise on the first day of winter. And, and uh, the, um, the Hopi have rectangular kivas. Um, in in uh, Chaco Canyon uh, and some of the New Mexico kivas, they're, they're circular, but the Hopi, for some reason, um, switch to the rectangular type of kiva. But the, the symbology is the same. Okay. Again, Orion is reversed. You can see um, Black Mesa here, but Batatican right here, uh, Canyon de Chez. This is what I this is what I was doing. Uh, you, you mentioned that I am superimposed the constellation on a Google Earth um, shot satellite photo, and they're pretty close. So it's not exactly right, but you know it's pretty close. You can see, and you know, how did they do that? How did they know that? Um, this is even more complicated because there are solstice lines, interrelationships between the villages. Um, I won't go through all of them, but the, ma the, the main one, if you stood at uh, Oribe on 3rd Mesa and looked to the southwest at sunset, the sun would be setting over Wupatki. And it keeps going, there, this is King's Ruin in Chino Valley, believe it or not. And it keeps going to all the way to the Colorado River. And there are other, other um, interrelationships between these villages. And they're, and they're solar. Mary? Yes? In uh, your bigger book, it talks about Tusigut being in this matrix, too. Yeah, um, okay. Well, here's, uh, here's Tuzigo right there. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty close to the line. Here's Palatki and Honanki. We went to Honanki just this morning. And you have chakra centers overlaid on, on that alignment. Yeah, here's... I'm wondering how you correlate it or where you got that correlation. Well, you know, just laid it over there. I, I took this from a, um, an astronomical chart and just put it down and um, I... I found that that Chaco Canyon was was where Sirius, you know, overlays. So uh, you can do a flower of life too. It's very, very, very beautiful. This is a Tuanasavi here. That red dot there. It's just south of uh, of um, between Second Mesa and Third Mesa. Of course, Solomon Seal too. And uh, again, the correlations to Egypt. Um, Abydos, who's been to Abydos? Have you been? Yeah. Um, and you've seen that, undoubtedly, right? Yeah. This is, um, is this painted or etched or something? Yeah. There are different theories that it could have been created by high heat. Yeah. But it looks like it's etched. But yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it's. A very ancient symbol. Um, this is kind of a, a, a kind of a kiva-like structure. It's you know it's submerged like that. It's subter subterranean, and um, the word Osirion, which this is called, is an anagram for is Orion. That's just a coincidence. Um, again, the the hexagon is very important for the way that. Um, that um, kivas were constructed. Um, it's a perfect hexagon at this particular latitude, 35 to 36 degrees north latitude. The summer solstice sun sets or rises at 60. 
The winter solstice rises at 120 degrees azimuth from, azimuth is the number of degrees from north around the circle here, okay? So the sunset would be, um, winter solstice sunset is 240, summer solstice sunset is 300. So it, it forms a perfect hexagon. And it's shown, uh, Chetro Kettle, uh, it's shown in this particular great kiva, Chetro Kettle. You can see that, that form. And the smaller clan kivas, you have the six pilasters that support the roof. Okay, it's also a hexagon. And uh, of course, there's the winter hexagon in the sky. As above, so below. And um, I extended the, the template. Um, you can see Orion here going over the Grand Canyon. And uh, Grand Canyon Caverns corresponds to Taurus. And um, down by the border here in, in Tucson, uh, uh, Gemini, uh, Canis Minor, or oh, Procyon uh, corresponds to Gila Cliff Dwellings. And of course, Chaco corresponds to Sirius. So that's, that's a basic, here's, here's what I call a, a chakra line, going this way. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through this fast, uh, you know. Um, of course, the Sohu Kachina, Sohu is star Kachina, and there's the, the three uh, stars on the crest and it corresponds to the belt stars of Orion, the three, three mesas. First mesa, Walpi, uh, that's, um, it's a triple star, by the way. Al Nitak is a triple star, and there are three villages there. Uh, and second mesa, Mishangnovi, um, this is Corn Rocks, it's a burial place, but here's, here's the village here. There's one of the villages on second mesa. And third mesa, Oribe corresponds to Mintaka. Um, here, uh, Canyon de Shea corresponds to Saif, the right foot of Orion. Remember, Orion's reversed, so it's a, that's the feet there. And here's the shoulders and the head. And um, here is um, Antelope House, right down here. You can see the, um, the van at the bottom of the canyon. You can get a perspective of how, how tiny this, this looks in comparison to the, um, the cliff there. I, was, I, I took this shot, I photographed this shot, and I was standing at the edge you know, with a, my tripod, and a big gust of wind came, you know, and I really had to draw back from the edge of the canyon to, so I wouldn't fall in. So I, I backed up a little bit. Appreciate the show. Yes, yeah, yeah indeed, yeah. Or that you're here. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> because you've got to watch that. You know, I, I fear for people's life. They get, get to the edge of Grand Canyon or something, and they just look, and, you know, they, wind could blow them off the edge real easily. <laughs> uh, here's White House Ruin in Canyon de Shea. Here's a, a kind of a neat little guy here. And this is supposed to be a, a video, but I don't think it'll work. No, it's not going to work. I don't know why it's not working. It worked on my, my laptop there. But. Um, here's some, we, uh, Graham and Santa and I went to uh, Canyon de Shea, took the Jeep tour. If you ever get a chance to take the Jeep tour, I'd do it. Um, here's um, Santa and her assistant. Here's Santa making friends with the horses here. And you can get a sense of how, how big this canyon is. Here again, the, the um, swastika motif right behind um, Antelope House in the Canyon del Muerto, which is an offshoot canyon of Canyon de Shea. Okay, if we go to the other leg of Orion, it's uh, Batatican and Keats Seal up here. Okay, this is the cliff dwelling in Navajo National Monument. 
Here's um, Graham and I. You can, you can walk down there and hike down there. Um, I did that some years ago and took this uh, photograph. Uh, it's a pictograph of um, Mass Isle, probably. And uh, that's a video we're not going to see. Okay, uh, here's a Keith Seal ruin, the largest uh, ruin, cliff dwelling in uh, Arizona. And if you go down here, uh, kind of almost due south of Batadikin and Keith Seal, you, you go to Homolovy State Park. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, petroglyphs around this area. The ruins have not been reconstructed that, that greatly. But it was a huge, it was, uh, had over a thousand rooms in it. And you, if you go over to, that was the right shoulder. If you go over to here, that's the left shoulder of Orion. That's Wupaki. Many of you have been to Wupaki. How many of you have been to Wupaki? Yeah. That's, that's Graham wandering around. Before I, I convinced him to buy a hat in the, in the desert, he was about to get sunstroke there, I think. And of course, uh, the amphitheater there, there was never a roof on this. And, the, and the, the ball court, the ball court is interesting because it's the farthest north on the North American continent. And that tradition goes, stretches all the way down to the Yucatan where the Maya ball courts, the Mayan ball courts down there. And it's adjacent to the blowhole, which is a delight in the summertime. It feels like an air conditioner blowing on you. you know. mm -hmm. That's undoubtedly why they put it there. Okay, uh, Walnut Canyon, which uh, many of you have been to as well, corresponds to the, the head of Orion. What was the relevance of Wupaki? Pardon me? The relevance of Wupaki? Well, it's... Um, it's the, it's the left shoulder of this template, and it kind of, that's where the, the arm of Orion reaches over to Grand Canyon, okay? And Wupaki is a, is a major site that, that, you know, the Hopi still visit and do ceremonies there. They do a, ceremonies at a lot of these ancient ruins that we think of as ruins, but the ancestors are still there, and they still uh, do ceremonies for these ancestors. At these ruins. And the, the, excuse me, the, the ball court being the farthest north um, in North America uh, indicates their travels. Indicates their travelings because they did go down into into Mexico and probably picked up that tradition and brought it north. Right, okay. And Wapaki is right by Sunset Crater, you know, which was a, a draw. I mean. That, that lasted a couple centuries. It was erupting and would draw people from all over the Southwest, if not, you know, down from Mexico into the, into the area. So, um, you know, um, the ball court was perhaps a place to bring these, these mix, the mixture of people together in, in order to compete with each other. Okay, um, how many have been to Rock Art Ranch? A yeah. couple of you, yeah. It's um, southeast, <coughs> of, <coughs> excuse me, southeast of Winslow. Not too far, it's Chevalon Canyon there, beautiful canyon. Um, wow. Amazing panel there. Again, our video will not play, but you know, it panned the whole thing. Here's a close up of that one panel. And I want you to take a look at this here, okay? This serpent up here, or water symbol, okay? And we get, we get to here, there's this symbol here. There's, um, at, a figure that looks kind of like those figures that you see in, um, in Utah, the Barrier Canyon style of rock art, with the uh, big shoulders, kind of a V-shaped um, 
a torso. On one side there's a, a deer or an elk, the other side is a human, and you have this that looks like, well, a twisted rope or DNA or something. Caduceus. Hmm? Caduceus. Exactly, yeah, which, you know, relates to DNA as well, right? Um, but, you know, I, this is preliminary work that I've been doing about this particular, these particular images. I'd like to go back to see these again and photograph them uh, in better light and get some better photographs. But you see this, this uh, hieroglyphic um, symbols for the word eternity in, in Egyptian. So you have this, this symbol, okay? You have, remember, um, remember this symbol that's above, okay, it's kind of up here. So you have the water symbol and you have a, um, for Hopi it might be the sun, or for ancient Egyptians it might be Ra, okay, the sun god. Um, this represents a star in, in Hopi, um, uh, Hopi rock art symbology. Um, this means to split in Egyptian, ancient Egyptian, the word Seth. Um, some other things. Um, this means uh, praise if you're praying or, you know, one hand up. Means to, pr to chant or praise or, you know. Okay. Yeah. The, the um, knotted symbol. On yeah. either side of the sun, yeah. the Egyptian, uh, Egyptian drawing is known as uh, Tet. It's the knot of Isis, and it represents the menstrual cycle. Uh -huh. So it has to do with uh, regeneration and rebirth. Wow. That's, that's cool because, um, well, look at that. that that's uh, in the same canyon. You, we have that, you know, birth, uh -huh. that whole birth thing. It's a birthing symbol. But um, again, um, a close-up of Masao here, rather spooky, and perhaps an Ankh. I don't, I don't know if this is really an Ankh here or not. It's not the total loop there, but it looks pretty, pretty close. So you have all these things together, and I've got to do some more research on this to really to verify it. So we have as above, so below here. There's the template on the Arizona desert. Um, a dozen or so villages along this, what I call a, a, a chakra line, okay? And the Hopi uh, do have a, a chakra system. Uh, they only have five uh, chakras instead of seven. Uh, the top one is called the Kopavi, the open door, which allows for communication to the Great Spirit. Um, and the, if you look um, along here, you see a Mesa Verde a cliff dwelling is, would be the base chakra. Um, the sacral chakra is the burnt corn ruins near um, the village of Pinion. The solar plexus would be the navel or second Mesa, you know, the, the belt. Okay, the heart chakra would, chakra would be a place called Kachina Points. Uh, it's a it's a mesa southwest of Third Mesa. The throat chakra would be um, Grand Falls on the Little Colorado River. The third eye chakra, the pineal gland, of course, would be um, Walnut Canyon in the foothills. You know, a lot of a lot of pine trees, pineal pine trees. Uh, the crown chakra, of course, would be, I think this whole area is the crown chakra. Um, Tuzigut would, might be the main uh, segment there, but uh, Sedona and the, and the Verde Valley in general. So you have this, this, um, this chakra system working within the template of Orion.